Well, the saga continues. This is my function gen, which you guys saw was not smooth sailing to build. I don't know what was getting over me, but whatever, that's fine. Then I posted the video, and then a user by the name of Larry Younger discovered what I missed. The fact that I have a backwards cap. So if I pull this one off here, yeah. So I figured today we would uh, fix this together. Getting this open here. So it's this cap right here, right in between, and if I fold this up like this, you can see that, uh, that white bar there is actually facing to the side of the board without the hashes, so this needs to be flipped. So I have a few tools I can do this with. I have my solder sucker right here just a little aluminum tube that you press this a little uh, button there and it shoots up the plunger I have some desoldering braid don't know how well this works haven't tried it yet I have some flux this is just a pen flux and so well let's give it a shot here so it's this one right here and if you notice the legs are fold it over and that was done by purpose I folded them over so it wouldn't fall out but uh, that might cause an issue now because this cap will be harder to remove these holes are also plated through holes so that causes another issue get a little bit off there I got some of it off, maybe enough to fold the legs back up. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I did remove quite a bit of it. Let's see if I can get some more off. Oh, my flux is going everywhere. I think I broke this pen to be honest. Okay, let's see if I can bend the pins up. I'm gonna give it a little gentle tweak. And see if I can heat these two pads up enough that I should be able to just tap this down and have the cap come off. Here goes. Nope. That's in there pretty solidly. Gonna try grabbing it with a pair of pliers, just gently. And giving it a bit of a tug when I feel like it got hot enough. Oops, slipped off there. The legs are nearly straight, so I think the fact that the legs were bent I don't think is as much of a problem now as it was before. I'm hoping not to damage the traces, but it is always possible to do so. Sometimes you get lucky and you heat these, uh, these uh, legs up enough and then give them a couple taps and they come out. Uh, let's see if I can get something smaller to hang on to these. I have some tweezers here. So I can 
and hold it like this. Hopefully this will work. It slid out a bit. I don't know if I pulled the pads with it though. Hopefully not. If you can see this is higher up now. I think it'd be best to flow some new solder down there now so you can get everything hot as an assembly. Same thing, gonna grab grab the cap with the pliers here. Just need to get this hot enough. There we go. And there's the cap. Gonna clean off the legs a little. Just taking off that excess solder. And then I'm going to get the spare solder out of the hole here. I think the sucker will work really well for that. Maybe I should add a little bit of flux too. Over here. There we go, I can see right through that hole. I think that was successful. Same thing next door. There we go. All right, pop that cap back in the correct way around this time. So that line needs to line up with that hashed mark, so it goes this way. Just like that. Now it's going to be a little bit harder to solder though. Fold it down like that. Yeah, it's not going to hold. I'm going to need some tack in there. Just looking for my tweezers I just had. Here they are. Okay, I'm gonna grab this. The uh, the bar is on that side. I'm gonna put that into the hashed side like that. I'm gonna take a little bit of this poster board tack, whatever it's called. There we go, that should hold it down. There are the two legs there. Put some fresh solder on here. There's one. There is two. Should be able to just remove this now. There we go. Need to clip these two leads. They're a bit long. Although I think it would be okay. One, two. Reassemble and then we'll be able to test it again. I don't assume uh, much has changed. Pretty sure this will work exactly the same. 
but that cap did do something. If you look at its legs, it's going to one side of these uh, pins and the other side to this side of the cap. So it's actually increasing capacitance somewhere. Put the side parts on, side parts, the front side, the back side with the little modification we made. This way here, over all this. There we go. This little screwdriver here came with my 3D printer. I've been using it ever since. not a great screwdriver but it always seems to be at hand and I guess the best screwdriver ever made is the one you have at hand and you got nothing else okay and last one in I'm gonna line these up straight as I can. They do have teeth so it shouldn't be able to put the knobs on too wrongly. There's one. There's two. And number three. Alright, so these are all done. Let's, uh, I'll just set this up a little bit differently and let's test it. Okay, so same setup as previously. I'm gonna put this to the 100 hertz to three kilohertz range. We're gonna try the square signal, but at the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to check see if this thing's own test signal will work. Uh, what do we got? So I'm gonna swap this to There we go. And we have a square wave right there, one millisecond. You can even increase this up higher. There we go, so we can see it. So now let's check our function gen. Hook up to the ground here. And then to the square wave. There we go, so we've got uh, times two, it's two volts per division. So we have an offset of about a volt. Then we have two, four, six, seven, about seven volts peak to peak. We can adjust that over here, we can adjust that. The amplitude, it doesn't seem to do anything in the square wave pattern. The amplitude knob, this one here. So let's try now in the sine slash triangle wave and it is on sine wave right now so you can see I can make this more sinusoidal sinusoidal there we go or less so I can clip the tops off of it so nothing really has changed here wondering if that capacitor was really that necessary but either way I mean it's fine that we have it set up. I can increase the size of the wave here. If I move my offset down a little bit, then I can move my trigger up. There we go. A little bit wobbly, but I'm not sure if it's actually uh, this function gen that's doing the, the wobble. I'm not sure if it's the fact that it's powered by a switching power supply and I'm not quite sure if it's uh, all the above. I'm not, I'm not really sure what's going on, but it does seem to work. It is a semi-stable signal and it's quite adjustable. 
you know, you'd get a little bit faster. So I moved it up to the three kilohertz to 65 kilohertz range. Increase the sampling speed, there we go. Yeah, so this does still work. It doesn't seem to work any better than it did before. It works just well overall. So that was a fairly simple fix. And once again, thanks for watching.